Millions of you have taken a DNA test at 23andMe, mostly to get those fancy percentages to tell you what countries your, your ancestors may have been from, but there is another part to the test. You get a list of your DNA matches, and those can be pretty exciting as well. Hello, I'm Diane Southard, your DNA guide, and this is Five Minutes with Your DNA. To log in and access those DNA matches can be a little bit daunting. There's a lot going on at the 23andMe website. So there's actually three different ways you can access your DNA match list. The first is by clicking on the Ancestry tab at the top and then scrolling down to DNA Relatives. You can also access it from a different place on that main menu under Family and Friends and then click View All DNA Relatives. You can also access it from the Quick menu on the side which says you guessed it, view <laughs> DNA relatives. So whichever way you get there, when you arrive, your page is going to look like this, which I feel like is really overwhelming. There's so much information going on here. How do we access it? What do we need to be looking at? What are the most important parts? So essentially, all of these areas could use their own webinar, in all honesty. They all have a lot going on. They all have a lot to offer you. I have gone over all of that in my 23andMe quick sheet that you can get on my website. There's a digital version as well as a print version. So if you really wanna dive into these different categories, you may wanna check that out. What we're gonna focus on today is what I feel like most of you are wondering, which is, how am I related to this person? What aspects of the website are going to help me figure that out? And again, there's a lot of ways 23andMe has for you to figure that out. We're gonna focus on just looking at one individual match. So if you click on any match in your match list, it's going to start with this information. So this is my match, Jake, and at the top there's going to be whatever information Jake has decided it's okay to share with me. So we, we say what's okay to share with our matches in this setting. So you definitely wanna take a look at your own settings by clicking on your name at the top and then going down to settings just to see what information you're sharing with your matches. And the more you share, the easier it's going to be for your matches to figure out how you're related. So in this case, I have a little bit of information about Jake. I have his gender. I know the last time he logged into 23andMe and I can see his location. Now, generally these locations are their current location where they're living right now. So that's an important thing to understand as well. So if you scroll down from that initial page, you're going to see this explanation of how 23andMe is suggesting you and Jake might be related to each other. I love the graphic nature of this. It kind of breaks down this whole what's a second cousin thing. I think that's all really valuable. But perhaps even more valuable is this text that I've highlighted right here where it says you and Jake may share a set of great grandparents making you second cousins, or you could also be from different generations, which is called removed cousins, or you could just share one great grandparent, which would make you half cousins. And at this point, your head might be starting to spin. <laughs> What I like about this explanation is that it reminds us that a genetic relationship that you have with a DNA match doesn't always translate into one, only one genealogical relationship. So even though they're saying Jake's my second cousin, they want to help me keep in mind there's actually a lot of relationships I could have with Jake and I need to keep an open mind about that. So if you scroll down from there, it's going to give you some information about origins and locations. And you can see I, in my settings, have entered all of this information for my ancestors. But Jake hasn't. But if he had, it would help me. So looking there first for information about your match may help you decide how you are or aren't related to somebody else. Moving on down from there is a really, really important list. This list is called Relatives in Common, and in other companies they call it the Shared Matches list. This is the list of individuals that's sharing DNA with you and with Jake. So if you know your relationship to any person on this list, it can help you understand your relationship to Jake. So if maybe you know your relationship to that first match on the list, to James is his name. If you know he's related to you through your mom's side, well then you know that Jake is also related to you through your mom's side. So even if you don't know anything else about Jake, you're going to know that. So this list helps group like 
genetic matches together. This is like your own little genetic family. These individuals on this list should be related to each other in a similar way. So that can be really, a really, I think, the most valuable way to help you figure out how you're related to a match on your list. So a lot of people ask about this column, this shared DNA column. And it can be kind of difficult to understand because there's all sorts of different designations that 23andMe uses right here. But basically it's about sharing permissions and about the permissions that your match has given for sharing. So again, those are all in the privacy settings. So whatever you see here is based on the privacy settings that your match has chosen. So just keep that in mind that not everybody's sharing the same level of information, but you can reach out to your match and ask them for more information. So that's the list view of the DNA relatives. And like I said, there's a lot more you can explore here, but I wanna just point out this map view as well. This map view is taking all of the personal locations that your matches have shared and putting them on a map for you to investigate. Again, this is totally interactive. You can click on each dot. It will zoom you in further and further to different locations. So if for example, you're looking to research an ancestor who was born in North Dakota, well, you might wanna zoom in on North Dakota and see which of your matches are from that location. If it's a recent ancestor, there's a good chance that they still have descendants in that same area. So that might be a good place to start looking. But whatever you do, do the next step. So you've just learned hopefully a little bit about what you might want to do with your DNA matches. If you close this video and you don't go and do those things right now, you're gonna forget. So this is your homework. You need to do this as soon as possible. I want you to go into your match list and look through the information on that profile page for a couple of your matches. Just get a feel for what kinds of information is in there, how it's different between different individuals. Gather any tidbits that you might use to help you figure out how you're related. And especially review that relatives in common list. That list is going to create a group of people who share a relationship in a similar way. That's going to help you figure out how you're related to this particular person. And then of course, click on everything. There's so much to explore, especially at 23andMe. There's so many things that you can look at that will help you determine how you're related to these other people. But it just takes a little investigation. I can't wait to hear how your search goes. Tell me how you're using 23andMe. I'd love to hear all about it in the comments. And until next time, I'm Diane Southerd, your DNA guide.